Hey guys, welcome to the video. So I got a question that was put to me. I thought a lot of people would find this interesting. Long time subscriber to your YouTube channel and I really enjoy your content. I'm strongly considering your web developer course because other Udemy courses I've tried, Java, just aren't cutting it and I don't find that I learn anything. But to be clear, I don't use Udemy because Udemy is not a platform specifically designed to teach code, whereas my own platform, which is used by schools all over the world, Studio Web, is designed specifically to teach code, and that makes all the difference, makes all the difference. But anyway, enough of my little shameless self-promotion, let me continue. I've tried Java, just aren't cutting it, and I don't find that I'm learning anything. I just type back code without understanding it. Very common, by the way, because most of the courses out there are put out by people who are A, noob developers, clear to me or any advanced developer, and B, they have no teaching experience. So that plays a huge role. Teaching, by the way, is a skill, right? Anyway, I just had a question about your course. I keep hearing web development and stuff like JavaScript is dying and won't be relevant in the future 10 to 20 years from now. That's absolutely absurd and ridiculous. Uh, the web technology keeps rising in popularity. Look at videos going back I've done on YouTube a few years. I've talked about that. Web tech keeps just rising and rising and rising. One of my themes on this YouTube channel, one of the things I've been telling people is that uh, when it comes to mobile, mobile application development, you have two basic approaches. You can either write native mobile, so if you're writing for Android, you're writing with Kotlin or Java for the Android phones, and then for iOS, you're either writing Swift or Objective-C to write your apps for iOS. This is native, meaning you're writing code that works and runs only on that particular platform, iOS or Android. On the other hand, you have the other way of writing mobile apps, and that's through various types of web technologies, cross-platform technologies, PWAs, uh, PhoneGap, just simple responsive websites. These are all examples of web-based mobile development, and that is where it is going because the web technologies, A, are getting so efficient, and B, the phones are getting so powerful, the advantage that writing native code that we once had to do six, seven, eight, ten years ago, no longer the case because uh, most applications are going to be developed using non-native solutions, as I said, web-based solutions. So just that alone will ensure the longevity of JavaScript and web technologies. For technology B, for some new technology to replace an old technology, it has to be 10 times better. It has to be significantly better. And the huge advantage with the web technologies, JavaScript, HTML5, CSS3, et cetera, is that they're cross-platform. You write a web app once, it works on all the devices. You write a, a mobile app using web tech once, it runs on mobile devices. Not only runs on mobile devices, it runs on your computers, it runs on your TVs. It just saves a lot of time and headaches. And as the JavaScript engine becomes more efficient, as the web browsers become more efficient, and as the phones become insanely powerful in terms of processing, uh, this is where it's gonna go. Because it's just a big time saver. 10 years from now, there's no question the web is going to be bigger. 20 years from now, well, who knows? But uh, 10 years from now, web is going to be bigger. But it doesn't matter because, again, one of the principles I teach here is that in any experienced developer, I'm, when I mean experienced, 10 to 20 years, when they, they'll tell you one thing for sure, is that once you understand programming, whether it be Java or JavaScript or Python or not Ruby or PHP, uh, what, pick a language. Once you have experience writing code, building software, you could pivot to the next thing very, very easily, you know? I can't tell you how many times I've been told since 2006 that PHP was going to die. And I was writing articles back on my site, killerphp.com, back in the day saying, that's ridiculous, PHP, is this going to stay strong and long? And uh, you look at, you know, 15 years later, Where's PHP? Depending on the language ranking, it's always in the top 10 most popular languages. A lot of times it's in the top five most popular languages used today. It's not going anywhere. Look at C++. This language has been around for like 30, 40 years, something like that. It's still being used. Look at COBOL. It's been around since the 60s. It's still being used. So Java, Java itself was, um, 
I started writing, I was one of the first Java programmers in the world. I started writing in the in mid 90s, 1995 or something. I don't know, it's, was it 15 years later? It's still pretty, it's still like, it's either number one or number two or number three in language popularity. It's not going anywhere. So this whole notion that these things are going to disappear out of nowhere, a very rare event that that happens. It's as rare as like the asteroid hitting the Earth and wiping out the dinosaurs. It's very rare. I know neither of us have a crystal ball to look into the future, but is there any credibility to these claims I find online? No, don't. 20 year olds, 20 something year old developers are juniors. You got somebody who's got 10 years plus, then they're starting to understand things as it goes. So I would be very wary. Not a, not a, there's going to be smart guys, no question. But I'd be wary about uh, listening to advice of somebody who's, who's barely out of software development diapers. You know what I mean? Uh, would I really have a shot at getting a junior job after your course? Well, yeah, I've had several, many people go to, just go to Google and type, type in Studio Web. Just Studio Web, and you're going to see on the side a bunch of reviews. I started putting reviews, well, not putting reviews. I started getting people to review on Google. I thought it was the most credible. To me, it's more credible to have 100 reviews on Google than to have 100,000 reviews on my site. So uh, go to Google, just type in Studio Web, go to Google, and you see what people think about the courses and how well they're doing with it. So the answer is yes, but it depends up to you. Um, I teach the fundamentals of coding, which includes much more than just the languages. You come out with a deep understanding. The analogy I like to make is most courses out there are like, how, I'll teach you how to play these top 10 favorite songs of all time. AC, DC, Highway to Hell. Uh, I don't know if I, I'll show my age. Stairway to Heaven, uh, whatever. 10 songs, and they come out and they can kind of play 10 songs, but they didn't know anything about music. I have a different approach. I teach you how to play music. I teach you timing, rhythm. I teach you tempos, scales, notes. I teach you the fundamentals of music so that all of a sudden you can play any song that's ever been written. And that's how I approach the way I teach coding. Fundamentals, fundamentals, fundamentals. Famous. Basketball coaches, I'm told, will tell their players, NBA players, work on the fundamentals, work on the fundamentals. Uh, it's, it's, everything is about the fundamentals. Anyway, so he continues, um, would I really have a shot getting a core junior job after your course? 100%. The process, I say, learn the fundamentals, do one or two uh, freelance freebie gigs, kind of like your stage work where you get real world experience. It, and that's going to do two things. A, give you real world experience. Uh, number two, it's going to uh, help you start building reputation, which is huge. Huge. I talked about that in a previous video. Reputation is one of the most important assets you can develop as uh, an individual. It will help you in every aspect of your life by developing reputation. Uh, and then uh, once you've done the freelance gigs, you have your website. You've got to put up a nice looking website of your own to showcase your, your work. I provide certifications, lots of schools use it, that could help as well. Proper certifications, not certificates of completion, which are worthless, just about. We're not worthless, but they're not worth, you know. Anybody can click through and hit, hit the last video and go, okay, complete the course. Now, a true certification has a process where you're tested on your skills, it's a controlled environment. That could help as well, although, even though I do sell certifications and certification services, I have for years now to schools, I just started doing to the public, I still am a big advocate, bigger advocate of uh, real world experience and resume. As a, and I teach you how to do, how to do that. And so, you know, certifi certificates of completion are worth this much. Certifications are worth this much. We'll say this. And uh, real world experience is worth, it's off the charts. So that's what you want to do. All right, so there you go. I hope that answered that question. I'm sure it's going to help other people understand this process. At the end of the day, I think you guys, most of you guys and girls are like me. You're looking at coding as a tool to, uh, to start a business or get a job or uh, start freelancing. You're looking at, a, 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 at you're looking coding as a way to reach financial and personal independence. I'm confident in putting out these courses because it's worked for me in spades, so I'm sure it can work for you as well. All right, check out below for uh, my courses if you're interested. I also have a mentoring program, which is new. It's a, it's a great program. People are really liking it. 
You get full access to all my courses, all my certifications for life. You get access to the private mentoring group. You get access to the bi-weekly Zoom meetings. And if you take that option, you also have the ability to have direct consultation with me. Uh, so that's very, very cool. So the mentoring group is uh, yeah, a lot more people than I thought like it. I figure why not, you know? When I called my lawyer, it cost me 400 bucks a shot just to talk to him. So uh, given what I charge for a mentoring group, it's pretty, uh, it's pretty affordable. All right, we'll talk soon.